In the last couple of years, I've sold over 5,000 DVDs on Amazon. I, I buy most of my DVDs from eBay to flip on Amazon. I do find them from thrift stores as well. And today I wanted to talk about a topic that you might be wondering uh, to yourself if you sell DVDs, especially if you sell new DVDs. Now, I wanna give a big shout out to Amber Darnell. She's a member of our eBay to Amazon flipping masterclass. Uh, that's my group where I teach people how to buy items and flip them from eBay to Amazon, just like I've done in the last year. I've flipped uh, over 12,000 products and a little over uh, $600,000 in the last 12 month period. So I know a little bit about flipping from eBay to Amazon. And uh, you know, when I started eBay to Amazon, I mostly did DVDs. Now I've expanded into other areas like tools and uh, electronics and just a lot of random different categories and whatnot. But I wanna talk about this question that Amber asked. So Amber mentioned in the group, hey guys, I just got a DVD in the mail and it sounds like the DVD is loose inside. It's a brand new DVD. So she says it sounds like it's loose inside. I tried to get the DVD back in, but it never got into a place where I felt like it was in the right spot. So I did some digging around and found that there was a booklet in the case. Would you risk sending it in not knowing if it's the DVD or if it's the booklet that's loose? So that's a great question, Amber. I've dealt with this so many times. And um, when it comes to a situation like this, yes, you know, I have tried to, especially when it's new sealed, I can't open it up and, and put it back into place because obviously it's not going to be new anymore. A DVD that might be worth $90 new could drop to like $8 real quick if you open it up. So you don't want to open it up. Um, if it's loose and I buy it from eBay, I typically would return it. Now, I, I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, Steve, what the heck? You know, I sell on eBay. That's so annoying when, when you know, people do that and they buy from me and they return it. I mean, if the eBay seller put in the listing, it was loose and I made the mistake and bought it or my team and I, we missed it. Yeah, we're going to take the hit. We're not going to return it. But if an eBay seller sells you an item and it's loose and you can't get it back in the side, I don't think it's worth the risk. And this is coming from someone who sold thousands and thousands and thousands of DVDs and not just cheap ones, high-end ones as well. When the disc is loose, and loose inside, it could easily get damaged. It could get scraped up and uh, it, it can have issues, it can skip. So I found that my return rate has literally quadrupled when I sell DVDs that are shaking around inside. Now it could have happened during the shipment. I know I get it. It's not the most fair thing, but I mean, if, especially if you're flipping high ticket DVDs, I mean, DVD selling for 50, 80, hundred dollars. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ship it out like that. I would return it. Or if I'm at a thrift store or at a garage sale, I would just pass on it or just take the hit to open it up and sell it as used. Now, if it is the booklet and you're confident it's the booklet, which I've never been really good at like determining, is it the booklet? Is it the DVD? Cause sometimes, you know, and I'll put some pictures on the screen, the DVD will lock into the actual case. And sometimes either the case, like the case will be clipped in that whole thing will disconnect. Or sometimes the, the disc, you know how there's like a little thing that pushes in and the disc gets held in. Sometimes it falls off. Now it's probably a 50, 50 shot if it's actually going to get damaged or not. But I would say if the items may be like, I don't know, 10, 20, $30, maybe I would be more inclined to take a risk because maybe people don't care as much. But when you're flipping DVDs, like for instance, in my situation, my average selling price over the last, you know, 90 days has been well over $50. The last 30 days, it's over $86. So I'm not dealing with low ticket items and DVDs. I'm dealing with, you know, items that cost a pretty penny. So you don't think, you know, a person would be mad if they received a DVD and it's shaken inside and it's scraped up. You better believe they, they, they will be upset. And nowadays, you know, there's a return for any reason on Amazon. They could return it whenever they want. For the most part, you're going to pay for the return shipping. Then it's going to hit your inventory. Then you're gonna have to pay to dispose it or get it shipped back to you. So I kind of, you know, I just avoid it now. People have said, you know, there's ways to kind of push your finger up against the DVD and lock it in. And I've tried it and it's just a pain in the butt. So for me, I typically just pass on them, um, especially if they're, you know, over 30, 40 bucks. Um, if it's less than that and you want to take the risk, go for it. But that's at your own discretion. You know, you have to understand the risk that you're probably going to have increased returns. Um, you might have to dispose items. There could be a whole vicious cycle of it getting returned and going back into inventory and returned. So 
you know, it's just part of the game. I know it's a little unfair. Sometimes an eBay seller might not notice it and then it gets shipped out and it gets messed up in the mail. It is what it is. That's part of the E2A game. But if you're out thrifting garage sales, I typically pass on them. Or if they have good resale value used, then I'll sell it used and open it up. So hopefully this helps. But hey, this is just my answer. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you do. But with that being said, I appreciate you guys. And if you want to learn more about flipping from eBay to Amazon, check out my brand new podcast, the E2A Flippers Podcast. I'll put links down below. It's on Spotify. It's on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. So go over there and enjoy it. But with that being said, much love and I'll see you in the next one.